Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I'm going to give you an entire homestead and garden update. I hope I don't forget anything or leave anything out, but if I do, ask in the comments down below. What are you doing? We have some new members to the homestead. It's Koopa and Rosalina. They are going to be our male and female breeders for our other male and females. Oh, he stepped right in it, of course. I thought it, I thought that might happen, giving them a big shallow dish like that. But I wasn't sure how far they could reach. Because they're so tiny. They're right here right now while Daddy fixes their roof in their shelter. But right now they're just adjusting from their trailer ride here from Alabama. Here at Wholesome Roots, we love to barter with other farmers. And that's how we got these babies. We had a buckling that our friend in Alabama wanted. And so we worked out a deal. And I think I got the better end of this deal, Jody. But our friends at Frog Eye Farm have a educational program that they use two of our previous bucklings for and this buckling is truly's buckling and he will be for breeding their new doe and because he's super sweet and generous i ended up with these beautiful red bourbon turkey poults as well four of them so this will help make up for how few i got out of the last hatch <laughs> and they're looking so cute they're happy Peaches, our big Kuni Kuni sow, was picked up by our friend and she's going to breed with his big Kuni Kuni boar. So she'll come back bred in a month or two, depending on how long it takes. And Ryan is turning Moose's temporary shelter into a more permanent shelter with a permanent roof that will be for the little bitty Cooney Coonies. We can keep them contained, hopefully, in the smaller wire. And uh, Moose will get to be out. Where is he? Where is he doing? He's hanging out with his bucks. <laughs> He's making friends. Pretty soon he'll be over with his lady friends. He is really maturing fast. So it'll really, really, I mean, I'm so close to just opening the gate and letting him in now. But with his size, I'm like, oh, I get a little bit longer. And the cows are fat and happy. Say yep, that again. You are. Say that again. And the cows are fat and happy. Uh, Our Narragansett turkeys are getting so big. They're only 10 weeks old, but so big. I know it's hot today. I know you're in the shade and you're hot anyway, huh? We're having a heat wave here in Georgia, so we're making sure all the animals have fresh, clean, cold water at all times. And definitely got the shade. I put an extra piece of cardboard for extra shade. And uh, just try to keep it cool. I hear you. Hi. I love the little pulse noise. And look at that. The piggies are eating their food. So they're used to a very small grain. It's like a ground corn. So I mix that in with some of our food that's been soaked just to get them used to it, still getting the taste of their old food but the taste of the new food until they adjust. It's really important that if you get a new animal that you get some of that animal's food that they were eating already at their previous farm and mix it into the food you're gonna be feeding if you're not gonna keep it the same exact food. So that's what we're doing for these sweet little piggies. The American brass are big enough that we can tell who's the roosters and who's the hens, so we've divided them into two, and we have six of each. We sold some, but we're probably going to start processing two a weekend to get an idea of what the carcass size is at 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 
14 weeks, something like that. 16 weeks is the highest recommended time for processing because it's supposed to be the best size carcass before it starts to get too tough. So we're really wanting tender for like fried chicken and quick fry. So we might end up doing our coals earlier. Best way to test it out is to start testing it out. Literally eating them at 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 14 weeks and seeing what we think personally. Cause mainly we want to do this for ourselves. If we get to the point where we have extra that we can share with friends and offer to our Facebook community, we will. But right now we're just looking at a sustainable meat source for our family. And these American breasts are seeming like they are going to fit that bill pretty well. Maybe throw a guinea in the stew pot too. Just kidding. Or a rooster. We do have a few too many roosters, but not not a lot. Just a couple. So we might, I don't know. We might eat those too. Might not. I've got a bunch of different flowers planted in this bed. Just a ton of different varieties of stuff. And I'm going to have this i'm gonna finish filling in with compost to the asparagus and strawberry where he's standing now i know who did that oh man you just told on yourself see how it's all scratched up right there i think i know who did it so i'm gonna plant this goji right out on the corner a goji berry right here on the corner and then mulch around to make a curve right here and the Raspberries and stuff are planted here. I know the Bermuda is awful. There's strawberries and raspberries planted. Eventually they'll be bigger than the Bermuda and I'll be able to mulch them in. But right now they're just so small that I just was like, oh well. That'll have to do for this season. Maybe in the fall I'll get it cleaned up better. Bermuda is just so hard to work around. But the asparagus and strawberries and zinnia and sunflower seeds that I sprinkled on top are all doing excellent. Perennial food has been the theme for this season. Strawberries and asparagus and fruit trees, comfrey, strawberries, more strawberries. <laughs> so we've got 11 new fruit trees over here. Well, at least 11. 11 of the big ones. And then we've got the mulberry. And then... I don't know if these gooseberry are going to make it. They have not leafed out at all yet. None of the gooseberries have. But everything else is leafing out finally. We're keeping it well watered. And mulching and composting everything. To keep it from getting too hot with this heat wave. I am loving how good the asparagus and strawberries are doing with all of the sunflower and zinni and wildflower seeds and our kale and collards are still kicking it bok choy is bolting lettuce is bolting but we are gonna have a few more meals off of this that's for sure tomatoes tomatoes they are the biggest bushiest healthiest tomatoes i have ever grown i think and this early in the season they are rocking our um, cilantro slash coriander is almost ready to harvest looks like some of them are actually ready I read that you're supposed to let them turn pink and then brown and some of these are already brown so I didn't really see a pink stage so I might start just pulling them off and putting them in the dehydrator to finish them off I tasted one and it has a lot of flavor but these tomatoes, oh my goodness, y'all. I don't know how, how this happened. It's just all the right conditions this year, I guess. Right timing that I got them in the ground. Everything else is late to plant, but these I got in at the right time. And they are just amazing. I've been trying to prune them from the bottom up. Uh, to keep them in check but man they have outgrown my ability to do so but there are tomatoes all in all in here 
there's tomatoes everywhere i just these guys are funky these are the um fills one and fills two they're like a cluster tomato like kind of like a traveler's tomato see that oh i can't wait to try these out they are so wild something out of a cartoon pulled all the garlic the kale is holding up okay but as you can see the romaine is bolting so we had harvested a lot through here i was just cutting the whole heads and eating them for salads and tacos and such but this bed needs to be cleared and this bed i might just interplant with something else and we got some ground cherries here on the corner that are already setting fruit and this is ryan's baby project we really 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 want a good crop of sweet corn we have been really bad at it in the past so this is our attempt to have it be better because we're putting it up here where we know things grow good instead of down in miss elsie's field where the soil is a bit more depleted we have a very good compost rich soil up here and we have as you can see there's some feather meal side rest already so we fertilized the soil before we planted the seed with a bunch of good stuff and then we side dressed with the feather meal for a nitrogen boost and then we will side dress again with another nitrogen rich fertilizer once they get a little bit taller and hopefully this will be the best sweet corn we ever ate cross your fingers holy basil holy basil that's right it's everywhere this is supposed to be a path oh this is a thai basil popped up in the middle of the holy basil good i wanted some more thai basil i tried transplanting some to other spots look at all the pollinators we've got itty bitty 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 guys of all different colors we've got bigger ones oh look at that native bee he's cool oh he flew away too soon i was gonna zoom in beautiful this is what i like to see my stinging nettle that I was too scared to harvest because I didn't want to get stung is going to seed. So this area will be taken over with stinging nettle. <laughs> I was pruning this sumac right above the stinging nettle early in the spring so that it would be lower so I could harvest the berries off of it easier. And I dropped a branch into the nettle and without thinking I grabbed the branch and I got stung so bad, it hurt so bad. I was shocked. It was my first time touching stinging nettle. And let me tell you, it was not a pleasant experience. But it made me scared to harvest any for eating and putting in my tea and stuff. So next season, I'll have the courage to put on some gloves and harvest them. But hopefully it'll be a bigger patch then, so I'll have even more to harvest. Right here, next to the nettle and sumac, we have... Our amazing pollinator tractor, which is Anis Hyssop. And even though it's a native plant, it is quite invasive in terms of reseeding. So it's it's grown quite a bit from the first little plant I planted. You can see it's pretty massive. But I'm okay with that because there's so many beneficial pollinators just all over the flower buds. You just tiny ones you can't even see big ones that you can see a lot of diversity so much mulch we have so much mulch so much mulch this is two truckloads here we're trying to get the bermuda covered up cardboard and thick mulch this bermuda has really been the bane of my existence and really slowed me down because it's taking over my blackberries so it's been hard to get in here. Look how deep my feet sink. You can't even see my feet. So it's been hard to get in here and harvest blackberries. Mmm. <laughs> Not too hard though. I still find a way. They're so good. But they're all the way through there. And I have so many other things I need to trim out. So this pole used to be the end of the garden. 
you can see it's no longer the end it used to go in we had a bird net that went in right about here cut across right about here went to that pole and then from that pole up to that trellis but we're expanding and all of this is going to be garden so little by little we got to get rid of all this mulch and by get rid of i mean spread it out basically so you can see i've kind of built up one tier here this was the older mulch pile so the you can't really tell but it does slope up the earth itself not just the hill as it gets closer to those trees there is an incline so i took this level of this bed and made this the next step up and then the next bed that i put here will be on top and be raised up this one looks level but it's really it was raised up <laughs> until i raked this hill out <laughs> and then it was level so this is just like another tier of the garden kind of like what we've done on this side going that way we have a tier here and then it drops down and then there's a tier here and then it drops down and then it's a tier here and then it drops down and that's all level. Look at those tomatoes. Oh my gosh. Which ones are those? Oh, they look so good. I can't wait. There's all, they're all through here. So many tomatoes. The porridge and calendula that I planted in the middle of the tomatoes is no longer able to be seen. <laughs> it is covered up with tomato. This plant here I had to remove because it was showing some severe disease symptoms. And now I feel like it's spreading to this one. So I've started cutting off leaves of this That's one too. Mom. It's very important that if you have a diseased tomato plant that you remove it from the garden and dispose of it, not in your compost, but in the actual trash um, to not spread that disease to future plants. Now blight's a little hard because blight happens every season and it doesn't kill the plant necessarily until the end of the season so we kind of have to work with it but this was something else I'm not sure exactly what disease it was but I suspect it was a wilt type disease and so I removed it and I'm probably gonna remove that other one now blight blights hard blights hard because it's kind of one of those things that you're gonna have no matter what and so you might have to just cut out the worst leaves from the bottom of the plant and uh, do your best to keep it from being a severe blight situation. Oh my goodness, these are broken. So these fell. These fell because they grew too tall. They're broken. Broken branches, which I think is okay because I think we can spare a few broken branches. But I'm going to get some string and tie them up to themselves so they at least have a chance and they won't fall and break and then that should help I don't know maybe we'll see we've got our Mary's heirloom seed challenge bed sunflowers came up nicely as did the cucumbers so we are excited for that these were my experiment this spring i wanted to start my sweet potato slips in soil so i took my special sweet potatoes i got and i put them in here and they grew slips great and i broke all the slips off and these all regrew already and the slips that i broke off i put in a jar of water for like two days and they were rooted completely so I planted them and yes yes they look stressed on the older leaves that were here when I first planted them sure looks awful but look the new growth that's what counts is that that shows me that the roots are taking control and getting planted and we do have some pests there's a leaf hopper but for the most part these will probably outgrow any of that yucky look I'm not trying to win any Instagram awards that's for sure I'm just trying to grow some food and then this one was my turmeric and ginger and not a lot of it came up so a little disappointed in that experiment 
but we have some. And I had Ryan go ahead and pick up some fresh ginger and turmeric roots from the market that I'm just going to plant straight into the ground and see how they do. Another pile of mulch in the front yard. Could not get enough of that. Front yard food forest is doing excellent. Got some apples that'll hopefully make it despite a little bit of blight at the beginning of the season. Our newly planted plants are doing good. Our plants that have been there are doing good. It's pretty much good. The only thing that didn't do good is again the gooseberry. So I guess I need to get in touch with Stark because it's not my fault because I've got one that did grow. One of them did great. Set out new leaves as soon as I planted it. But that's part of the risk you take with bare root plants is uh, not all of them are going to make it, but Stark Brothers does have a guarantee, so they should replace or refund. I'm not sure which. I haven't actually gone through the process with them yet, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Hopefully it's a pleasant process because I get stressed out by that kind of thing, like having to do returns or, I don't know, it's like I don't want to be the bad guy saying, your plant died. I just feel guilty, you know? Like, I don't want to point out something they did wrong. <laughs> I don't know why I'm too nice. I have so much garlic drying in my garden shed. So much garlic. It looks so good. It smells really good in here, too. It smells like garlic. We've been growing this Virginia creeper up our light pole all season but half of the vine got too heavy and fell so that's why you see like a lot of brown and stuff and like how this is just hanging here on the ground and it was right before it bloomed and i'm kind of glad it happened because i never would have gotten to experience this if it hadn't i was just sitting here pruning tomatoes and i heard the sound and I thought, is there a swarm ar around me? Nope, the Virginia Creeba has these very nondescript flower buds. And they are loaded with this ground bee. It is just all in here. It's a native pollinator. It's, oh, I wish I could get a good, it, they move so quick. It is all in here. And these weird little blooms. They love it. Virginia creeper, native vine. Beautiful fall foliage. A lot of people pull it out and throw it away. We like to let it grow. Beautiful. Another beautiful bloom attracting pollinators on the homestead is bee balm. And it is covered with our pollinator friends as well. I love it. Now bee balm always gets powdery mildew. It is something I've never been able to stop and it doesn't prevent the flowers from blooming. So I don't try to stop it. I'm okay with that. Not everything in the garden is going to look perfect. Not everything is perfect. But those babies are perfect. They are all doing so well. The bottle babies are growing strong and healthy. The bottle babies are growing strong and healthy. The sheep are doing good. The goats are doing good. We have a couple of goats that had some parasite issues and that was a bit of a challenge, but I hope we're on the upswing from that. So you're gonna come see me. I don't have a bottle. <laughs> What? I don't have a bottle for you. It's not bottle time. It's not bottle time. Silly babies. They're so cute. Look how fat their bellies are from their morning bottle still. And they are eating. They're eating food, so they're growing fast. What damsel? This is the one that scared us with her little disbudding infection, but 
it cleared up just fine. And she's gonna be a pretty girl, isn't she? Oh, that's your sister's name. Pretty girl. Charlotte and Damsel. The boys named them. They're doing really good about naming animals these days. I hope you enjoyed this garden update and homestead update and that you continue watching for more updates in the future. We'll see you next time at Wholesome Roots.